Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the QuickBooks integration with Autotask. I'm going to show you how to run the approve and post process in Autotask, how to generate invoices and get those through into QuickBooks. So if that is of interest to you, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, Chris Tim here from Sundella Consulting. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get invoices out of Autotask into QuickBooks Online, and I'm gonna go through and show you the entire process from setting up the integration, what you need to do on both tools, and how you need to get an invoice into QuickBooks. So let's go take a look at how this would work. So from within Autotask, the very first thing we want to do is we wanna create a new API user. So the easiest way to do this is to actually click on the uh, Autotask logo, go into admin, and then resources and users. And then from here, under this little drop down button here, we can click on new API user. So I'm just gonna bring this over. Normally what I would do at this point is I'd give the first name something to do with, uh, with whatever tool it is. And then the uh, last name I just call integration. You can call that whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. And then I'm going to give this a email address. And then I'm going to pick a security level. Now by default on this demo system of mine, um, everything is set to system. I do recommend that you change this away from the system and you give it something, um, uh, you know, more locked down so that it can only access the certain information that it needs to. I will put a link uh, up there somewhere for, um, for a video that I will be doing on setting the security levels. But for the time being, I'm just gonna set this as API user system. What I'm then gonna do is to use the generate key and generate secrets. This is gonna create the API username and password. And then under the integration vendor at this point, I'm simply going to just type Autotask. And then you will see that there is the Autotask QuickBooks Online integration. What I'm then gonna do is I'm just gonna copy these out into a notepad because I'm going to need to use these a little bit later. So I'm just gonna copy them out and simply hit save and close. So the API user account is now set up. There's one other thing that we need to do inside Autotask. So under the admin, then under the system settings field, from here you can see we have contracts. If you simply click on there and change this next invoice numbering to not enabled. So this basically says that Autotask is not going to generate the invoice or the invoice number. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna let QuickBooks generate that number. So we click here to edit and then all you simply need to do is to make sure that the next invoice number here is cleared out. Hit save and close and that's it. Once that is, is not abled or not enabled, what we should be able to do now is to go ahead and set up the integration. I have put a link in the description below uh, for the, the setup to connect the integration together. Um, so all you need to do is run that link and it'll come up with this screen so you can go ahead and set up this integration. So in this case, I'm just going to select my company. It's now going to go ahead and ask me for the API user details. So here where it asks for Autotask username and Autotask password, this is that API user account that we set up earlier on. So I'm just gonna go and copy these in. And then what I'm going to do is to go ahead and paste the password in. And what will now happen, this will go ahead, prepare the app for the first use, and this will now come up with a bunch of things that I can start to set this integration up on. So if I simply uh, simply say uh, configure settings, this will now allow me to go through this integration. So the very first thing you wanna do here is to select the version of QuickBooks that you're using. I happen to be in the UK, so I'm setting this up as non-UK. And then it says sync whether invoices should be synced to order task. Well, obviously we do wanna sync them to order tasks. Of course, we're gonna say, um, oh sorry, sync whether Auto task invoices should be synced to QuickBooks. Of course, that's why we're setting up the integration. 
How many days back do you want to look for unsynced invoices? I normally leave that around 14 days. It just means it won't bring in all the old invoices that you have. Uh, but of course you can change that number to anything that you want. One of the next things here is the invoice numbering option. And if you remember earlier on, we set to say that um, we were not going to use auto numbering in Autotask. So what we do here is we're going to say now that we're going to let Autotask generate the invoice number. If you do want to use invoice numbers in Autotask, then you can use this option here to say use the invoice number from Autotask, which would then override the QuickBooks number. Of course, you can choose whichever way you want. And if you do choose to use this option here, so use the invoice number in Autotask if available, then you need to that step that we went in where we um, where we made that invoice number blank, you need to make sure that there is an invoice number in there. But I'm going to tell it to let QuickBooks generate that number. When invoices are voided in all the tasks synced to QuickBooks, yes, I want to do that. Then all I want to do here is it says, now what is the Autotask billing field used to match the name? So at this point, we're going to use the billing code name and I'm going to simply select that. So the billing code is going to be things like work types and service codes, it's going to bring those into QuickBooks and it's going to create those as products and services with inside QuickBooks. When we go through this and we actually get the stuff set up, I will show you how that works, um, it, you know, when it comes through into QuickBooks. Then it says if the item is missing, we want to go ahead and create it. And then all it's going to do is to say to us by default, you know, what is the standard code that we want to use uh, inside here. So I have just have a standard sales code and I'm just going to use my sales revenue code. And that's it. I'm not going to se select any of these other ones except for this one here that it ignores invoices with a zero total. And then I'm simply going to hit the save button. So what this is now going to do is this is going to go ahead and set this integration up. And all being well, you can see that the configuration is now complete. The last step we have to do is to actually now go ahead and connect it. And there you go. It is now connected. The way we will see this is if you go into QuickBooks itself, under the apps, then under my apps, you will now see the Autotask invoices. And from here, we can go back into those settings. Or of course, we can launch it. And now we'll have a whole bunch of different settings that we can use inside this integration. So here is all of those things we set earlier on. There's a couple of other things we can do. Uh, you know, we have the option to manually sync invoices, to manually copy an invoice. You don't have to do any of these. The, uh, you know, this integration will automatically do it. So once you've built in all the tasks, once you've run the approved and post and you've created the invoice, it will then go through and automatically bring these into QuickBooks for you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump back into Autotask and I'm going to go ahead and run the approve and post process and create some invoices and get those invoices into QuickBooks. So let's go and actually do this. So if we go to contracts, approve and post. So here we have our approve and post screen. If we look to see if there's any labor. Okay, so here's a, a labor item for Justice League, you know, Outlook not working. So we might want to go ahead and bill uh, bill this amount. So let's actually just go and do that. So we simply approve and post. Then the other thing we can do is just continue to run this approve and post process uh, as as we need it. So if we do the recurring contracts, okay, there aren't any recurring contracts for this month. But let me say, you know, maybe I want to go and invoice for say February. So I'm just going to forward this to February. Maybe I just want to chuck these invoices into QuickBooks. So let's just go and do that. And what you'll see in here is there's a whole bunch of stuff out in the blue, Justice League. There's a whole bunch of managed services stuff in here that I'm going to go ahead and bill for. So I'm going to simply approve and post those as well. And that's it. The approve and posting process is now done. So the next step before I can get the stuff into QuickBooks is I actually need to generate invoices from all of those approved items. So the first step would be to run that approve and post process. Once you've done that, uh, we then uh, will see in this screen here, if I just tell it that I want to look at everything from today until the end of Feb. What this is going to do is you can see here are all of these um, 
items that have been approved that are ready to have invoices generated for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the process invoices and then I'm simply gonna go and process these invoices. And at this point, once I hit process invoice, all of these invoices will then be brought through and created inside QuickBooks. So you can see there, it's now processing those invoices. I can close this window down, but I'll just leave it to do its thing. And you can see that those invoices have now been created. So the next step here is to then go into invoice history. And if I search on invoice history, I can see, you know, here's some of the stuff that's been done. Um, let's actually just go and say, yeah, we want everything that's been invoiced today. So here's a bunch of, of, of invoices that we've just invoiced today. What we are expecting to see when the integration um, has, or, or when these invoices have synced into QuickBooks, we are going to expect to see an invoice number in here. And this should be the QuickBooks invoice number. So for the time being, I'm just gonna go ahead and say sync invoices now, just so that I can force this integration to, uh, to go and sync these invoices. You do not have to do this. Um, it, it will do this automatically for you, but for the purposes of this video, just to make sure that it is working, I'm gonna go ahead and sync these invoices. Then if I look at the error logs, just to make sure there's nothing happening, I can see now that there are some invoices running. And this is now, all it's doing is pulling stuff in from within inside Autotask, and it's gonna put them into QuickBooks. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh these logs. This process doesn't take awfully long, but what I should see if I flick back into here and I do a refresh, eventually I should see this invoice number field being populated. Okay, so if we hit the refresh button, you can now see that we have invoice 1035, and we keep doing this, it should hopefully bring the others in shortly, but we know that invoice 1035 has now been created for Caron Properties. So if we jump back into QuickBooks and then we simply go and have a look at our invoices, uh, which is under sales um, and then invoices, what we should see in here is there's the Caron Properties one and I think it was 1035. Here it is here. And now if I click on this and then click on edit invoice, you'll be able to see everything that's come in from Autotask. So here it is, the service bundle, um, you know, it's a bunch of stuff that's come in, 564 pounds, and with the tax, it's 667 pounds. So let's go in and have a look at that. So we can actually look at that exact same invoice inside Autotask. So if we go ahead and we view this invoice, this should give us exactly the same amount, oh, which it hasn't. It is, sorry, I was looking at all of those, uh, the zeros, but there you go, you can see the 667 pounds. Um, and now um, all of those amounts have now been entered into QuickBooks. So if we just make sure that all the others have come in. Okay, so this one here for Justice League has given us an error. So one of the things that will happen is if there's an error, then you can simply go into the error logs, um, which I will do as a, as a separate video as to how to diagnose these error logs. Um, but if there's an error, it will simply tell you, and that should also send you an email to tell you why there's an error. Uh, go and correct the error, and, uh, and it should work. Now, one of the things at this point, if you remember when we set up the integration, we said that it was going to create those um, billing codes as products and services. So all that will happen now is you can see here under the, um, you know, one of these, let's look at out in, out in the blue, um, so if I go and actually view this invoice or edit this invoice, what you will see here is that this has brought everything into this product and service called monitoring services. So this will have been created as a service or a product within Autotask, uh, within QuickBooks. So I can go back into here um, and then under the sales, if I look at products and services, I should see those managed services. So. If I just do a search for that, here I can see manage services. And at this point, if I click on edit, you can see that it's, it's automatically defaulting to the sales code of sales. 
What I'm now going to do is to tell it at this point that I wanted this to go to my managed services code. So here I have a managed services income code and I can simply now map it. What this would mean is that moving forward, anything uh, that now comes in for that particular code will be mapped to this income code automatically. And that's it really. It really is very, very simple and very straightforward to get this working. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please give us a like below and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you.